Am I live? Still don't understand why YouTube took away the little message. You are live. I guess there's a little thing right there. So, where's my thing? There it is. Get comfortable. This might take a little while. This is a video for one of my ATDrafting.com customers. He is building this house. Let's see, I'll show you what it looks like. Let's see, north elevation. It's a, it's a cool house. Let me put that in perspective mode. I don't have braces. <laughs> I'd have to turn them off. It's a cool house uh, out in the country. Let's go back to that. And he has got the foundation laid, the block laid. He has the floor framing and decking in. And I think he has this wall up right here with these this long wall with the windows and doors on the front. I think that's the front front of the house. And in about a week, he will have um, the all of these walls up. And he had a question about bracing. And you can see I've got some bracing up here. And, and I put that in here just to show you what some temporary bracing. It's kind of funny because there's two types of temporary bracing. There are, there's the type of bracing you just throw up. Um, throw up. You don't throw up. You put up. Uh, when you're just uh, installing the walls, you know, uh, for the first time, okay, or raising them. Okay, so let's say none of these walls are here. This wall is laying on the floor, this long wall. This long wall is laying on the floor. You just got it built. You raise it up, and you put these temporary braces on the outside here and then you nail it on the outside of the band of the floor system. The reason you put this on the outside of the plane of this other wall is so that when you're raising this wall, you know, it'll be uh, laying on the floor too and you'll raise it. But the sequence is you do your two long walls first, this wall and this wall. And you raise them up and you put these temporary braces on them okay again you see it's on the outside of the plane of this wall okay uh, the reason is you're not you're not going to plumb these walls these all the braces i'm showing here you really didn't do much plumbing um leveling when i say plumbing i don't mean your bathtub i mean you didn't worry too much about this wall being plumbed when these braces went on, okay? These are temporary, temporary, temporary <laughs> braces, okay? You just put up to hold the walls up while you're building the other walls. That's all they're for, okay? If anything, when you stand this wall up, you don't want it leaning in, you want it leaning out of fuzz. So that when you stand this wall up, uh, this one it's laying on the floor when you build it right you raise it up you don't want the two outer walls leaning in right because it'll make it hard to get the top of this wall in okay so <coughs> excuse me got a little congestion going on let's see if anybody's we got one maybe maybe again this is a video for my customers so uh, not, it would be nice if he was here, but it's okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. 
Why do I always get uh, allergic uh, reactions when I'm doing live streams? So I'm going to show you after you get all your walls up, they're stood up, okay? They're not really plumb yet. They're not plumb and straight yet, okay? Let's pretend you just got all these walls up and these are the only braces that you have. You put these two up. You put this one up just, just to kind of hold the middle of the wall temporarily, okay? And the same thing over here on your two long walls. Those six braces literally would hold the house up Hold the walls up until you're ready to do the semi-permanent bracing, semi-permanent temporary bracing. Okay, that's the best way I can, I can describe it. <clears throat> I may have to stop and uh, wait till I get over this. I feel like a beast on me in my throat. <laughs> um. So. These, um, this, this seems like it wouldn't be complicated, but if you've never framed a house or a building before, it can be a little complicated because of sequencing. And in construction, sequencing is everything, okay? So when you first put these temporary braces on here, you're not trying to plumb the walls yet, uh, perfectly plumb. You're just trying to get them to where they're standing up straight enough to where you can build all these other walls, okay? The building is going to kind of plumb itself a little bit as you go because when you this would be your uh, see that would be your fifth wall this would be your first wall your second wall your third wall your fourth wall all your perimeter walls go up first then your next longest wall you see you're working your way down to your shortest wall in your house because you want to do the longest walls first. Uh, because imagine this wall is up now. Now these walls can be built on the floor in between that. You see? But if you built these walls first, and say there was a wall here, well this long wall, wouldn't you wouldn't have enough room. In this case you would because it's a coincidence because this is a big open space. But uh, trust me, you want to work your way down, you know, from... Longest walls to shortest walls. That's the sequence. Now, when you raise this wall, because the top plates and the bottom plates, the doors aren't cut out when you raise your walls, okay? So that means your bottom plates and your top plates are all the same length. When you raise it up, it forces this wall to be the same uh, you know, a, um, length apart as the bottom so you can imagine yourself when you, as you're standing walls up you're kind of the house is sort of self plumbing and straightening itself but it's not perfect obviously um, that's what we're going to do next let's see if we got any other people up here so let's pretend that we've got all of our walls up and these are the only braces we had to do while we were just getting them up, okay? So now we're gonna start the process of plumbing or bracing the walls and straightening them, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, probably should've done this before I started, but let me take a, let's see how long this two before is right here. I'm just gonna copy this one. Paste it. I'm gonna rotate it. Now, some of this stuff is easier to do in real life because uh, you can imagine I can I can just pick up a two before and easily manipulate it <laughs> without having to do all this rotating in CAD. So it takes a little bit of time. Okay, but let's. Uh, Let's get this over here. I'm going to leave these braces white like that. That's probably going to be a good way to demonstrate this. And this needs to be flush with the top of this wall. Okay. Your braces should not extend up past the plane of the top of your wall. 
because you're going to be setting trusses next. Okay? And they should not extend out past the plane of the wall this way. If you have braces like this, if you'll notice, even my temporary brace, I did not stick out past the plane of the wall because I, if I did leave this brace on there, uh, then I don't want it interfering with my sheeting. Okay, you don't want to you don't want to do things twice when you're building. Okay, now this I'm going to try to take advantage of this the length of this two before because uh, these two befores really need to be about, be about twelve or sixteen feet long. I'm going to go down here, just where I can see. I'm going to raise it up to where it's barely sitting on the floor. Okay. Because what you want to do is you want to be able to put a nail into this bottom plate through here. Okay. Um, uh, that's that's where you're going to get your strength. This bottom plate is nailed down good. Okay. It's, it's stable. So that's where you want to nail that. And then you're also wanting to nail it up here. But time out for a second because we're not nailing them yet. We're just going to nail the top of them. Okay. For now, what you're going to do is go around to all your, you're going to put up all your braces and nail them at the top. That's it. So what I'm going to do is put one there. Because you'll notice these other braces are still on there holding it up. So what you want to do is get all your braces. Oops, that's not a group. That's weird. And this will get quicker here in a minute. As I as I get more braces up, it'll exponentially <laughs> go quicker because I'll be able to copy more braces. Okay. So now I'm going to copy these. I'm going to put them down on the other end. So now we're just nailing the tops. We're not... Okay, see that's going to go quicker now. Now I can copy those, spin them around, get it right there, and you just want to even if just Butt those together. Okay. Again, we're just nailing the tops of these right now. We're not we're not uh, we're not nailing the bottoms yet because we haven't even got our plumb stick out. Yeah, okay. Now I can copy these. And the whole purpose of this is to Brace the wall so that while you're setting the roof trusses, your house doesn't move around. And I, I, I have literally been on jobs where we didn't let me get that axis. Where is it? Lock that axis. Put it right there. I should have another one on the other end now. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, I've been on jobs where... I've been standing on top of these walls and the whole house was shimmying around because I've always been a big dude, even when I was younger. <laughs> and uh, had some had some mass to me. Um, and if I was always a good test, okay? Now on these long, on the long walls, we're gonna have braces there too, okay? And we're gonna have braces. Where else are we gonna put them? We're going to have one there. What you want to do is find all these points where... Now they, I don't know why I used an extension on this and I don't know why it didn't put... I was testing out Medique's 
Oh, I know what it is. I was testing out Medique's wall extension, which is really great, okay? Uh, I know what it is. This wall, these walls are different heights, but there's a there would be a T in those walls. Let's see if I got another T somewhere I could show you. Yeah, there's one. Is that blocks? Uh, normally we use blocks for those. Okay, we don't use whole studs. Oh yeah, on T. Well, sometimes on T's we do. Is that a group? Let's make it a group, and then I can spin it around. Because I don't want y'all to get any bad impressions. Okay, so there would be a T in there, and it would line up with that wall. Okay, lock that. Line it up with that, and then I can delete this. Copy that, Roger. Got that. Okay, so now you're gonna, now that that's correct, that's the way it would be framed, then I can come in here with my brace and put it along here. Because you want your braces about every eight feet on the wall. And so, now here's a good, here's a good point. At, and actually, actually I wanna, I kinda wanna, I kinda wanna get that up higher, honestly. That's only a foot there, but if I, in real life I'd probably nail myself a little block there and raise that brace up because what I'm gonna do with these intermediate braces is I'm gonna straighten the wall and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So what I would do is this temporary brace right here. Now, while I'm, again, we're only nailing the tops of these right now so they'll stay up, okay? We're not nailing the bottoms yet. So I would come over here in the middle of this wall, probably in the middle of this window somewhere, and I would nail this. And again, I would not let it stick out past the plane of the wall, okay? I would nail it on the side of that cripple like that. I would not let it stick out because sure enough, if I'm going to be mad whenever I get ready to put my sheeting on. Okay. Now I'm still leaving this brace here for, for the time being, but I'm going to, I'm going to grab this block. And I'm just going to nail this block down, but I'm not, Again, I'm not nailing the bottom of the, I'm not nailing this yet. Okay, I'm not nailing the brace yet. I'm just nailing the block to the floor, getting ready, okay? And I haven't taken, you see, I haven't taken this one down. Let's see if I have any questions yet. Hey, Tony, love the channel. Thank you so much, Freedom M. Hey, hey Salty. Hadn't heard from you in a while. This is Alexander. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm doing this uh, video for um, one of our, this is actually, this is one of our ATDrafting.com customers. And uh, he lives pretty close to us here in Chattanooga. He lives up on Fredonia Mountain. And he's got his walls almost framed up, or he will in about a week. He's got some of these walls up. Did that go 90 degrees? Oh, 180, sorry. Okay. But I'm doing this kind of as I would do it in real life. Well, I, that's that's what I'm doing. Exactly the way I would do it in real life. <laughs> Why did I say that? I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't fake it with a... Let's see. I should have... I'm going to raise that up a little bit. Don't I? Now, this one, what I'm doing is, you can see, about every eight feet. Okay? And I'm just... For if anybody's just showing up, I'm just nailing the tops of these, okay? I'm not nailing the bottoms yet. I'm just getting them. I'm just wanting them to stay where I put them. And I'm going to put this one. I'm going to put this one so it, I don't need a block on the floor. I'm going to run it over here and see if I can get by with nailing it into that. Is there a stud? 
Well, boy, honey, you know what? What will happen is in real life, what you'll do is you'll you'll be, you'll let this stud go at an angle. You'll put it there, and you'll run it out to where it's not going outside the wall. See, I got lucky. I don't want that going outside of the wall because I'm going to put my wall sheeting on. And then I'm going to, what I'll do is, should I show this? Yeah, I'll just go ahead and show it. I'm going to take this, and I'm just kind of saving myself the trouble of putting a block on the floor. That's all I'm doing, okay? I'm going to nail it like that, okay? Now, let's see. We got those. This is about every eight feet or so. I think I can get that wall straight like that. I've got my corner brace up. I've got one there, 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 and there, okay? Now let's check this other wall. I got one there, there, there on the corners, okay? Now let's go this way. And I want to put one in the middle of this wall. Now see, this is why you can never have too many two before <laughs> I had a homeowner one time ask me, why do you have 852 before? <laughs> I said, you will, you will see, I promise you. And your house will be really strong because we're going to brace it off good. Okay. That one there. And again, these plates are not cut out. Okay. When you're, when you're first framing, um, your walls are all, your walls are all still right one length of bottom plate you don't cut the doors out until you're ready to cut the until you're actually ready to uh, set the doors pretty much well before you do drywall you'll cut cut the plates out okay and the reason i'm bringing that up is because well that extension i use you know obviously it cuts the doors out for me which is handy but in real life this plate will be there nailed down really good and you'll have you want to nail that to the bottom plate, okay? But I'm sorry, not yet. Don't do it yet, okay? And I think one more brace, and we'll be ready to straighten the uh, plumb the corners. I'm gonna look at this now. Probably one of these, you know, one of these walls probably be good enough. You, you kind of have to uh, gauge this by, you know, how straight the wall is, okay? So let's look and let me see if I've got, uh, probably, let's see, this brace, this brace is going to brace. You see, you've got a lot of cross-referencing here going on and that's what you want because you know, one, one, this brace coming this way will also brace this wall coming this way, you see? But you might say, well, if you get a wild, you know, if this wall is not straight, then you'll have to put braces on it, okay? But this would be like the minimum number of braces, okay? Let's see if I got any comments. Hey, Tony, been busy with snack reviews <laughs> I know I'm just kidding <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat and it's not a good time to do a live stream okay now now guess what we're gonna do now we're gonna take down these temporary braces okay these were well what we're gonna do is take them down as we go okay so we're going to start, we're going to do this systematically. We're going to start in this corner right here. Okay. I'm going to have a helper. Okay. I'm going to get my plumb stick, my level. Where's that stud? That's weird. Should be a stud. I'm having to fix my framing as I go around. Again, I used, this might have been one of the first houses or I used the wall extension on a long time ago. And uh, I might have missed some things. Okay, so I'm going to take my level and we'll put it right here as high as I can reach because these are nine foot walls as high as I can see the bubble 
okay and I'm gonna knock take my hammer and knock this knock this brace off okay now this uh, as a matter of fact I gotta go ahead and no that's good enough because remember we didn't nail this we haven't nailed any of these braces so they're not holding us back now now the only thing now we can just move this corner you can literally push this corner back and forth now okay and what we're going to do is i'm going to hold it plumb and when i get it perfectly plumb i'm going to have my helper put a nail here in the bottom plate and come up here halfway and put one just making sure that stud is straight because you can actually use these braces to climb up on the walls with it but i have seen people uh, fall because they weren't nailed in the middle and they'll get up here halfway and they'll kind of push out on them and they'll pull the, the brace loose. So you want to brace, you want to nail it here and in the middle. Okay. Now, same thing this way, put your, turn your level the other way. Okay. And then plumb it this way, back and forth this way. Okay. And I'm going to say right there, shoot it, you know, probably have a nail gun bam bam and come up here and bam bam and this you know in real life this will bend these two fours will bend around these studs okay they're not uh they will bend in that in that direction they bend easy because the grain is running in this direction okay and you can it'll just bend around that that stud trust me um okay now because we're gonna work our way around clockwise, okay? Uh, oh, you know what I did? I forgot to, in real life, this would have been evident, but if this plum, if this corner was not plumb, I would have to knock off that brace right there, okay? Now this will go back and forth this way, and now I can plumb, now I can level it and shoot my nails in. Now when I come over here, because because this wall, because these top plates and the bottom plates are the same length, now you're going to check this, but most likely this is going to be plumb. Hopefully, if you did something wrong, it might not be. <laughs> but most likely, this corner is going to be plumb in this axis, this plane right here. Okay, So you can just say, that looks good. Shoot it. Shoot nails into the bottom plate. Shoot one in the middle. Okay. Again, you can climb up those. I don't know how many times when I was in my 20s. <laughs> I just walk right up that brace and get on top of the wall if it was nailed. Now, now we're working in the, on this in this direction, okay? So I'm going to knock off. I'm not going to forget this time. Uh, really, this brace isn't hurting us. I'm just going to go ahead and knock it off anyway because we're getting ready to brace this wall. Now I'm going to take my plumb stick my level and I'm gonna plumb it in this direction. I've already plumbed it in this direction. Now I'm gonna plumb it in this direction and I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna lean on it or pull on it because these walls will, <clears throat> they will, they'll go back and forth. You can rack them easily, okay? And um, I'll get it perfectly plumb, shoot it, shoot it there, shoot it in the middle. Now I'm gonna go down here. I'm not I'm not doing these intermediate braces yet, okay? Those are gonna be used to straighten the walls, not plumb them. Okay. I'm gonna go down here now because I've already done the other corner. This one's gonna mo most likely be correct, okay? So I'm just gonna check it, plumb, it's good, bam, shoot the corner in the middle, okay? And you're gonna go around like that, and of course, you know, as you go around the and you plumb you know, when I plumb this corner, this one's going to be good in this direction. When I plumb the corner in that direction, that one's going to be good. You know, and of course, I've already plumbed that one, so this one's going to be good. Okay, so it doesn't take long. It takes longer to nail the braces up, you know, than it does to actually plumb the walls. And so now, you're going to plumb the major corners. Okay, I plumbed all four major corners. We don't plumb... We don't plumb these walls, okay? I mean, we don't plumb. We take a string and run it from one end to the next, okay? Because what you want is, since since your top plates and bottom plates are all the same length, 
that forces your wall to be the same distance apart, okay? Same here, this major wall going here. Bottom plate, same length, top plate, same length. Uh, when you straighten this wall, they're gonna be the same distance apart. What you wanna do is maintain parallel here, okay? Because when you start setting your trusses, okay, you want that to be 27 feet 11. Our house was 28 feet wide, but you, you subtract the half inch. The wall set in a half inch for the seating, see? That way you don't waste, make, uh, making these walls flush with your band is a mistake because you just wasted all that OSB. Now you got to cover up that band with OSB, okay? And the purpose for the OSB is to be nailed into your bottom plate and your top plate, and that gives you a good strength. The strength axis of OSB is vertical, okay? Four feet wide. You see a lot of people laying it down, and that's it works, but the strength axis of OSB is supposed to be that you nail the top of it, and this would be on an eight foot wall, obviously. The top of it gets nailed to the top plate, and the bottom of it gets nailed to the bottom plate, and then all your verticals get, and that creates a big X in the wall of bracing, okay? Back in the old days when we didn't use OSB, we use crappy blackboard or you know whatever it was. You could stick your finger through it, and the only way you could brace a wall was to take these metal strap braces and nail them on there. Let's see if we have any questions. Hello, Richard. Ah, oh, Barrett knows this stuff. Barrett's been working with me for fifteen year twenty years. <laughs> how long? How long has it been, Barrett? Uh, at least 15 and uh so okay so now uh the again uh now we're at the point of straightening our walls okay so now what you're going to do you're going to pull a string you're going to drive a little nail right here you're going to drive another nail on the other end and you're going to pull a string really tight from here to there and you're going to leave it up off the wall about a half inch okay you don't want it touching anywhere it's not supposed to touch okay um, then what somebody's going to do is is sit up here and look down and they're going to say pull this brace in you know push it in or push it out you know okay push that in push it out okay look at it and the in the wall will have you know it'll be kind of wanky on a long wall you might have to push that in and pull that out or whatever you know again when you start setting your trusses, all of this wall should be this, this parallel with this one. So imagine yourself going down through here with a level <clears throat> that you bought at Home Depot. That's was what thirty bucks, and you're plumbing this wall, okay? And let's say that you 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 know on on levels, we used to have to mark the end of them. Let's go see if we can find us a level. <coughs> plum stick four foot level here we go download yes baby okay and you would you know it see see these jokers somebody see what see what people do <laughs> this is what this is what trolls and sketchup do They'll create something and they'll load it up. They'll load it in the warehouse and it'll be, you know, a level that's bigger than your house. Okay, you got me. Whatever. All right, so my point is, is that you went and bought a cheap level and now you're using it and you're sticking it up against this stud and you think it's level and you say, oh, that looks good and you nail it. Okay, down here. Then you go back and you say, well, dang, there's a hump and the, there's a bend in the wall. The reason there's a bend is because you didn't straighten the wall with a string. You plumbed it at different points using a plumb stick. We call them plumb sticks. A, a level, the reason we call them plumb sticks is because we use them mostly for plumbing things, not leveling things. In, in framing, we don't, you won't ever see a level out, you know, leveling something horizontally. It's all plumb, okay? So, 
if I if I use a level here, I used to have to mark the end of a level, okay, uh, of the good end because they got a bubble on both ends. You turn it upside down, one bubble would say one thing. You flip it over, and that bubble would say another. You see. And that's the way, you know, things that are made in China, <laughs> that's the way they offer it. That's the way they act. So you don't plumb. Once you get your corners plumb, you trust your plumb stick to get it close enough on the corners. Okay? But when you start straightening, when you start bracing the rest of these walls off, you want it to be straight. Okay? You want it to be that straight right there. Okay? See if we got any other comments. This is a lot better with my new request. <laughs> if I use half inch plywood for the outer wall sheeting, would it matter how they were laid? Okay, so you're, you'll check the manufacturer of your product. You'll see that it has a strength axis. Okay, you can, the strength axis. The strength axis of plywood it's generally, see, you see, no, this is incorrect. <laughs> and this is what's wrong with the internet. You see, everybody has their own opinion, but I'll tell you this right now. If you go, uh, how can you, let's draw a piece of OSB, okay? Just to demonstrate this, I'm going to draw a piece, okay? Four feet, and it's at the right direction, but eight feet. When you know it, that'd be my look. It'd start off hard. Well, we'll just leave it that way, okay? We're going to make a group, and we're going to make it half inch thick. Okay. Now, let's put it down here where it goes. Okay. That's the wrong thing. That's a stud. Okay, it'll go in the middle of that stud. Okay. Now, if you if you if you look at your manufacturer's recommendations, you will see that the, the manufacturer requires you, and the code actually requires you, to nail this at least eight inches on center. The edges, okay? The edges. Okay. So how can you nail it eight inches on center? If you got your studs 16 inches on on center, you have to block between. That means you would have to block, and this is what we do. If somebody, if some noob goes out and lays my sheeting down edgeways like this horizontally, now I got to run two rows of blocks. You know why? Because the wall is only eight feet. I mean, it's nine feet tall. Okay. Okay. Now, I, now I got another situation where I have another uh, edge that I can't nail eight inches on center, okay? Now, if you would just not listen to Reddit, because Reddit never built anything, this is how I get myself in trouble with all the nerdy trolls, <laughs> is you would realize that uh, plywood in an OSB is meant to be stood up like this, because guess what? Now, now on an eight foot wall, there's no blocking required. Okay. Let's get this. And this house just happens to have, um, cause see your studs are on 16 inch centers, right? Now all my edges, my edges can be nailed at eight inches on center. Eight, 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 eight. You can nail them 12 inches in the field, okay? In the field is out here, okay? And I only have to do one row blocking. You see, this is the way it should be done, like that. Now, you can, um, let's see if we have any comments about that. So what do you think about that, Breha? Breha, like that. But no, seriously, um, uh, 
what you're doing is you're forcing yourself to uh, now if you're a hack you know and you want to lay your osb down on its side we don't really use plywood for exterior sheeting anymore it's too expensive if you want to lay it down on its side um and you know and not not nail it properly but what's going to happen is uh let's go back to that where it was laying down and i'll move this out i'll move this over four feet okay in between your studs okay this piece this piece could be pushing in this piece could be pushing out or i don't mean pushing you know materials aren't perfect that's why we nail them eight inches every eight inches right on the seams because uh, if if this piece here is bowed in and this one's bowed out what happens you get misalignment and you're going to have a bump in your siding okay that's why you want all your edges to be nailed on all, all of your edges what did i do i messed up my thing Am I going to be able to get it back? Okay. All right, so you want all your... I'm not going to leave it like that because somebody will come and see that. They'll think that's what I want. Now, see, this is even more important uh, when you're... when you're dealing with eight-foot walls because there is no blocking required on an eight foot wall. Okay. So, um, actually I'm gonna delete those. All right, so hope that answered your question. What about half inch walls? Bracing would need to be put in between all the studs per code. What about, oh, 12 foot walls, sorry. Yeah, on 12-foot walls, you would need to use 2 by 6 studs, okay? And yes, you would have to put blocking. Technically, at, technically, wherever you can't nail the edges, and I'm talking about the, all the edges, all four edges, 8 inches on center, then you must, or in some cases, let's say, let's say that uh, the code is saying that this wall is a, let's say, here's a good, here's a good, example this long wall here okay the code let's see is it 30 feet no oh see the, the building inspector this house isn't going to be inspected because it's way out in the county and way out in the woods in the rural area but the code a building inspector could some come and say you have an unbraced wall for 30 feet and what that means is well that unbraced it's braced now but when you when you get ready to do your drywall you're going to take all these braces down you know because you've got your roof on and all your uh by the way i really didn't finish the bracing but you go all the way around after you got all your corners plumbed and nailed off then you go around with your string and you just want to make sure your walls are straight at that point okay because you're getting ready to set your trusses and that now, it's probably a good idea if you don't want your house moving around while you're setting your roof trusses, you can go ahead and put the wall sheeting on. You don't have to cut out for the windows now, but you can go around and cut all, uh, put all your wall sheeting on, and that will help start. That will exponentially make your perimeter, you know, your wall sturdier. Because uh, I'm, you know, I've set trusses before before when and i've had crane oh, i have a boom lift my trusses up there you know and the, and the crane will be dropping the trusses and bumping the house with them and you know then you got to go back down and check uh, the walls for plumb and all that it's uh there's a lot of forces on these walls until you until you get everything framed up uh, there just is but uh on 12 foot walls Nine foot is the tallest you really want to go. This is a nine foot wall here, which gives you, you know, a nine foot stud is 104 and five eighths, and you get a nine foot one and an eighth uh, height 
with that. That extra height is to give you room for your floor and ceiling finishes on the inside. But uh, yeah, if you're gonna have a 12 foot wall, you're gonna have blocking uh, by code that's required at all the joints. And they're all, I can tell you, builders front make, builders front make straight walls. Oh, don't make straight walls. Yeah, you see, and Kingpin's right. Um, <laughs> uh, this we deal with this all the time. If I get if I get these corners perfectly straight or plumb, and then I get these walls perfectly straight, I still have to deal with quality of materials because this stud and its stud grade, you know, studs are stud grade is a grade of uh, lumber, right? A stud grade uh, two by four is supposed to be straight, you know, it isn't supposed to be wanky, but sometimes you'll have one boat in and one boat out and you'll get that situation Kingpin's talking about where the, you know, it makes it harder to install drywall and then you can all, uh, uh, sometimes after, sometimes by installing your sheeting, that will help straighten up the wall if you get it nailed properly. You know, it'll take a it'll take a stud that's bowed out a little bit, and when you nail it here and here on this stud, it'll help push it in, and then and then the same thing with the drywall. But you really shouldn't have to be relying on <laughs> your drywall to help straighten out your wall because uh, it bends too easy. <laughs> that's kingpin knows. Yeah, the the studs. Um, <clears throat> What's funny is, um, you know, we're supposed to be able to depend on stud grade uh, two by fours, but they still, we still have to crown them when, you know, when the wall's laying on the floor before you put it up, before you stand the wall up, you know, when we were putting the studs in the wall on the floor, we look at them, you know, we look down on them to see if they're, which way they're crowned. And you know you're not supposed to have to crown a stud, but you know you can tell sometimes when it's laying on the floor it'll be rocking a little bit, right? And we'll say, oh, turn that stud over uh, so it's facing out, so that all the crowns are facing out. At least they're all facing the same way, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're just not getting here, this is a, um, a project that I'm doing, um, I actually have some pictures that I think he sent me. Let's see if I can find them. Let's see if I can find, if he might have texted them to me. Let's see, Tom. Let's see, Thomas, oh, that's right. He spells just like Tom, Thomas right, here we go. Let's see, what is this? That's not it. Let's see what this is. That's that. Oh, <clears throat> well, you know I'd have to go looking for pictures, dang it. Most of this stuff is where I've helped him out with his material. Uh, how do you search for pictures? What did I do? Ah, anyway, <clears throat> I'll, do an, I'll do a video of this house he's got the foundation laid he's got the floor system done he's building it himself he's doing a really good job he's kind of a novice carpenter and he, in about a week he'll have all of these walls up and he's already got several of, the, of them up i've helped him with dimensions on this long header here and all that so i know he's got this wall up and he's working on the other long wall but he was wondering about bracing and uh, uh, and I just want to do this video for him to show him how you know you know what's enough you know now the thing about it is well, you know there's kind of a long span on some of these if the, if you're looking down these walls it's probably a good idea uh, to go ahead and put if you see you got a, a room that's kind of long, has a long wall in it if I can get my stuff here 
Make sure that's not sticking out because I don't want these braces sticking out. That's a really big pain in the butt. Okay. So you might have to do, um, on, you know, in some places you might have to do more braces. Say you get up here and you're looking down this wall and you got your string up and you're, and you're like, you got all these, all these braces where they're located, you know, you're right on the line. You know, but you just couldn't get, because of these two short walls, there's a loft up here. So these are eight foot walls. And these are nine foot. Uh, this, maybe this span between here, the corner, and the, this brace is just not straight enough. So you put one here and you'll get up there and look at your string, you know, say push it out or in and nail it. You know, you'll have a block on the floor. So you'll just have to put some braces and again here, you know, this may be too long of a span uh, without a brace. And I think I need to do, you know, this one. I think it's a straight one. You might have to put one right there, you know. And these braces will stay on here until you get basically ready to, to drywall. I mean, what I always do is I'll get my trusses up. Let's go get our roof trusses. Roof trusses, okay. There's our, he's got uh, scissor trusses. And I'll be making a video for him on that. Roof, oh, roof framing. Yeah, and this is his gable in framing here. Because when you're up here working on this, <clears throat> if you don't have your house braced off properly, you can literally feel that thing moving around underneath you. And it's it's a little disconcerting, you know, because you don't know if you're if you're making the walls out of plumb or out of straight, you know. And then once you, what I would do, what I would recommend is putting on at least the OSB on the first, you know, on your walls. Where's our wall sheeting? That's not it. Wall sheeting. Uh, there we go. Um, it, of course, you don't have to cut the windows and doors out. You know, we normally do that later. Uh, but it's good to have the wall sheeting on. Obviously, this wouldn't be on up here. But on the first floor, that helps stiffen up the walls and brace the house off while you're setting your trusses. Because, again, I've, I'll get a boom. And I'll set five or six trusses at a time up here. What I mean by setting them is just laying them up here and they'll just come up, boom, you know, it'll jar the house around, you know, sit it down, lay them down. You know, the whole process of setting the trusses, uh, it will shake, move the house around. And then after you get your trusses set, of course, now I'm kind of speeding through the, you know, then you'll put your roof sheeting on. Now, now you're starting to get, uh, you know, stabilized at this at this point and then of course you'd get your roofing on you know, you do your synthetic sheeting and your metal roof that all that starts to help stiffen it up and then you know then you would set your then you do your tyvek on on your exterior sheeting and then set your windows and doors and get your exterior siding on i'm kind of going through all the things i would do before i took the braces down on the inside when people, when my subcontractors start complaining about the braces, I might take down a few, <laughs> but they literally need to stay on as long as you can. And as long as you can tolerate them, you want them to stay on there because it's just going to keep your walls uh, plumb and straight uh, while you're uh, messing around, you know, beating on the building. I've had roofers, if you, if you uh, have shingle, a shingle roof, on your house instead of a metal roof, you can stand on the floor right here and they'll drop their bundles of shingles on the roof. They'll put them all up here on top, right? They'll all be laying up, but they basically drop them because when they drop them, it kind of cracks open the packaging, you know, it'll bend and it'll, so they'll just throw them down and you can literally feel that standing on the floor, right? Shaking the whole house. Uh, not just having five or six guys up there. It's all the material they're putting up there. So really these braces 
are, are important. Um, a lot of people uh, don't really understand that. I was helping, <laughs> I don't know if I can tell the story or not. I was helping my friend who's in the military with some uh, barracks. And uh, anyway, one of the things he had to go do was inspect the, some of the barracks that had gotten blown down in a windstorm. And he sent me pictures, which I can't show you. Um, and um, I was like, well, where's all the braces? Because you could see all the walls were just laid over and the roof trusses were laying over. And I was like, I don't see any braces anywhere. And he was like, they didn't have any bracing. <laughs> I said, bingo, <laughs> there's your problem. Let's see what we got for comments. <clears throat> Yeah, I wish companies still had standards. Why don't they? Well, we have a we have a Tyvek for the roof. It's just um, we call it like a, a product I use is a liner lock. I think it's uh, how do, how do they spell it? It's a uh, uh, synthetic felt. It's basically synthetic felt. Uh, here's another one. It's just made uh, a little bit uh, differently for roofs than walls. Uh, it doesn't have to breathe as much as Tyvek does. But it's basically, honestly, you could probably use Tyvek, but the synthetic uh, felt is uh, a synthetic underlayment is cheaper than Tyvek. So, um, I use a brand. I wonder why I can't find, how do they spell liner lock? Liner lock incorporates. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. They don't have very good pictures. Here's a picture. Uh, let's see if I can find, let's put this on images. It's basically, um, yeah, here we go. It's ba oh, back to that. Good Lord, why do people do that? This basically uh, like a Tyvek, but it is a little less slip, uh, a little less, it has, it's more non-slip uh, than Tyvek. Um, so, you know, if you're on, you're on a steep pitch, you don't slip as easy, but it's made, uh, it also grips the roof a little better. Uh, so it's just made for roofs. It's basically a Tyvek though. It's a good analogy because it's, it's still a woven, uh, what is it, polyethylene or whatever. <clears throat> now that's what we use. Now some cheap builders still use roofing felt, which is really crappy. Uh, one of the crappiest products ever made because it tears. You can just, uh, you can't tear this stuff with your hands. You can just stick your tongue through roofing felt. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I don't know why they even bothered making roofing felt, the old 30 pound or 15, especially 15 pound. Can one use all treated wood to build a home with? Cost not being a factor. I wouldn't, um, because treated wood is, is really, uh, kind of crappy to be honest with you. Uh, I tolerate it, um, for things like, you know, porch framing. Where's my porch framing layer? The problem with uh, treated lumber is that um, it, it's got a high moisture content in it, and as it dries, it twists, warped, cracks, cups, uh, everything bad that lumber does, treated lumber does it exponentially, you know, does it quicker and, really, and it's guaranteed. <laughs> so, if you're using it for things like floor joist, you know, you're okay. But I would never use treated lumber for studs or walls, wall framing. Um, let me go back to my framing view here. I would never use treated lumber uh, for wall framing or, you know, you're just asking for the, you're asking for those problems that Kingpin was talking about earlier. You're, as soon as the house starts to dry out, your walls are gonna go all kinds of ways bad and so what if they're resistant to bugs how do you know what how do i know how do you know that ha 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 can one of these treat it? how do i know because i've been doing it for 40 years 
I've been using treated lumber for since 1978. <laughs> That's how I know. Dang it. Mm. Uh, why, if it was, uh, if it was something good to do, why, why don't we do it? We don't, we don't do it. We only use treated lumber where we have to use it. Okay. See this pressure treated seal down here? We're required to use it there. So we use it there. After that, we don't use it. Okay. That's it. And except, uh, for porch framing, that kind of thing, anything that's going to be exposed to the weather. Okay. It's just, uh. Crap, crappiest, crappiest lumber of all time, to be honest with you. <clears throat> He's talking about rough sawn treated. Uh, I don't know. There's, there isn't such a thing as... In, I've never seen rough sawn treated. Uh, most companies who treat lumber, they'll use, uh, you know, SPF. Uh, they'll use surfaced all sides, S4S, surfaced four sides. It's basically... It's basically regular pine two by fours or whatever pine lumber that goes through the treated process, uh, but it's milled. It's not rough sawn or anything. Um, now I would use, there are millions of millions. There's a bunch of uh, things you can use for your deck. We just bought, I just bought Siberian Larch for this house. I need to do more videos on this house uh, we're just always so busy. Uh, I just used this on the front porch of this house we're building. If this is a good alternative to treated lumber, um, Siberian larch is we you know I know I have a friend of mine, a Russian friend of mine, imports it to the United States. Uh, Leo, he's a good friend of mine, and I buy it from him. And it's naturally, you know. These trees are naturally resistant to decay and they're beautiful. So, and it's just a little more expensive than treated lumber. So why would you, why would you use that? Because treated lumber is going to go wanky on you fast. I promise you. What else? What other questions? When should you consider framing with two by six rather than, uh, just the height of the wall. And like I was saying earlier, uh, Nine feet is typically uh, as tall as I will go uh, with the two by four. Uh, if, if I go, that's my personal standard. Now, I think the code allows you to go up to 10 feet. Uh, it's two by four is 16 inches on center at 10 feet, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. They make uh, two by six studs, just like they make two by four studs. And after I go over nine feet, I use two by sixes. I mean, I've had walls that were 16 feet tall, you know, that we've built, uh, like stairwells, like, uh, on the side of a house or something where you had a stairwell that went all the way up or a foyer or something like that. We frame them, um, frame them up with two by sixes. Pier beam structure using treated four by 12 by 20 for beams and four by six for post. And treated ply for floor, then I will use regular wood going up from there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, anything that's exposed, um, any kind of foundations or decks, you know, um, but you really don't need to. When you get into beams, like this house, uh, we have a, let's turn off the um, floor. The subfloor, you see, here we have uh, 12, you know, 12 inch concrete block piers, and that's a pressure treated plate there. And then we have LVLs, we have three LVLs for our beam, but it's not treated. You know, the only thing that's treated here is what makes, you know, what comes into contact with your concrete. And uh, if your crawl space is vented properly, uh, like ours is, there's no reason, you know, you won't have that situation where you have mold spores, wood spores growing on your, you know, de deteriorating your lumber. I mean, it's more expensive. It's not as dependable. It's not, uh, it's just, uh, you know, 
in construction it's just not it's it's a it's a love hate relationship you know i love to hate it uh, so plus back in the old days if you're like me you know <laughs> when i when i first oh thanks kingpin when i first started dealing with the uh, treaty lumber it had arsenic in it so you know i may end up dying from <laughs> from being exposed to treaty lumber uh uh, I'm just kidding. I don't think I inhaled that much sawdust of it. But anyway, I didn't mean for this to be a long video. I just wanted to show Tom how to, in case nobody saw it, here's the, here's the sort of, let me turn the style to where you can see. This is the style I use when I print drawings. There's a brace that I should have deleted. Let's see, styles, styles. Where are we? Select. There we go. That's probably a little easier to see. It's it's a little farmhouse. It's really kind of cool, honestly. I like it. It's nice. Got it'll have uh, you know five or cement board and batten, metal roof. It's just kind of cool. Cool little house. All right, so I don't want this to be a real long video for Tom or anybody else. The main the main thing was to uh, show him how to brace off the walls and, and talk about the importance of it. And um, so I'll end it here. And I appreciate everybody for watching. Thanks, guys. Thanks all. <laughs>